Welcome to this week's installment of Inclusion Revolution here on Eastlink TV. I am your host, Tova Sherman, and I'm really pleased this week that we're going to have the opportunity to speak with Krista Harder. Welcome, Krista. Thank you, Tova. Now, Krista's here today because she's going to talk to us a little bit about the importance of a holistic approach to both health and wellness. But Krista, I understand that you are a coordinator at Reachability. That's right. And can you tell me a little bit, first of all, about what you do there formally, and then we'll talk a little bit about that holistic approach that I'm really interested in hearing about today. Sure, Tova. I'm the coordinator for two programs at the moment, the Gateway Program for Youth, um, which is an employability skills program. So it's for youth between the ages of of 15 and 30 um, who haven't had a lot of experience in the workforce or who are re-entering the workforce after an extended period of time and it's giving them those employability skills, life skills and then they have a supervised work placement where myself as the coordinator would visit them at least once or twice a week uh, and then they would come back for Friday sessions uh, where they would learn more employability skills which they can then use on their placement. How long would a program like that run? It's about five and a half months so the first month is, like I said, just gaining those hard skills, the things that they will need in the work workplace, and the next four and a half months is on-the-job training. I love that because I really believe if we can take some of our clients to the workplace but also support them at the workplace, which is one of the things I know that the Gateway program does, it's a little unusual. Can you just tell me a little bit about that particular element? Because I think there are employment programs out there, but I think really what makes Gateway special to me is the idea of how you follow once you then place them into jobs. And could you maybe talk a little bit about that? Sure. So first of all, we have an employer meeting. So we lay out some expectations uh, for what the employer will be responsible for as well as the employee, we really want the employees to feel like they're part of the, the work team. So it's the same expectations as any other employee, it's just that they are supported. So if they have any concerns throughout the week, they're able to contact myself as the coordinator, and then I stop in, sometimes on a scheduled visit or an on-plan visit, to just to see how they're doing. And if they have any concerns, then we would bring that up immediately, because we feel like um, immediate intervention is, is the best. Right, obviously as things, we all know, as things keep going with employers, they may not always bring them up, and employees may not always bring them up, but then it always gets to that point where we can't go backward and it's very difficult to fix. So this constant meeting and engaging both the client and the employer through this Gateway program is why I thought it was really, really fascinating. But as you know, I'm really here today because I want to talk about something you've been doing that I think is very important and something that everyone interested in the inclusion revolution and supporting persons with disabilities needs to be thinking about. And that is what I believe, you know, for lack of a better term, a more holistic approach to providing services. For instance, I know that you have a background in natural nutrition, mm -hmm. in Reiki, as well as outdoor education. Sure. And before we talk about where that all fits, could you tell me a little bit about your experience in those areas and why to you this is such an important issue? Sure. I studied natural nutrition uh, about seven years ago and that had a huge effect on my life personally because I was able to see how diet, nutrition and all of those things can impact on my lifestyle, on how I felt uh, and what I was able to do. Uh, so my abilities increased, uh, my personal wellness increased. So that was something that I incorporated into my lifestyle. Uh, my background in Reiki, I've been doing energy work for about six years as well. And that's Reiki energy work, Reiki, forgive me. Yes. So that's a form of energy work, so channeling uh, positive healing energy into another person. And it has a huge relaxation component, um, and it, it also focuses on the spiritual element as well. And my background in outdoor education for the past four years, I've been pursuing outdoor education with youth at risk, uh, primarily in Ontario. And there's numerous programs there that um, allow youth at risk to be able to challenge themselves and develop some self-reliance and uh, communication, a lot of transferable skills through these programs. Uh, so I've been working with youth at risk. Well, I use the term transferable skills a lot because I do see how what we learn in one way in one place can be easily transferred when we really think about it. And I guess my most, what's interesting to me about what you bring 
is traditionally agency programming and you know programming that is supported by all of our levels of government for high-risk youth or youth with disabilities specifically tends to be a very classroom oriented very sort of come in we're gonna meet we're gonna talk we might role play we might do this we might have a speaker but definitely there's sort of a tradition to disability uh, supports and and uh, programming that doesn't necessarily integrate the things that you're talking about and I'm presuming that a lot of that has to do with just a lack of awareness of those transferable skills that come from it but I mean I hear holistic living you know green is the big thing now and all mm -hmm. of that and I do appreciate the importance of individuals taking care of themselves I'm sure I should you might want to take me on next. But you know, the reality for me is that I, I'm really fascinated on how we can influence programming and how we can show the, the, the importance of integrating some of the things you've talked about, outdoor education and so on, into more of the traditional classroom programming and why they complement and how they complement each other. Can you maybe address some of that for me? Sure. Uh, I think it does come back to what we were talking about, the transferable skills. So take, for example, a canoe trip. And people might think, well, how does that have any impact on employability skills? Well, on a canoe trip, there's two people in a canoe, maybe three, and there's elements of teamwork there, communication, cooperation. All of these are transferable skills which employers are looking for. They want to know that at the end of the day, their employee is a team player. They want to know that this person is able to communicate well with other people, that they can get their point across. So in the program that I'm doing at the moment, Cycle, um, it's a conflict management conflict resolution program we're learning a lot about assertiveness and it's great to learn that in the classroom but what about taking people outside of the classroom and seeing if they can practice those skills so being outside uh, it may be a, a kayaking, tandem kayak, and learning that you're going to have to assertively tell the other person in the kayak when to paddle, what side to paddle on, where to turn, what's going on, you know, so you're still practicing those skills. Um, even though it might seem like it's a completely unrelated activity. Right, and I love that. I, I hear what you're saying. Like it's, it's starting to kind of sink in where that all fits in terms of, uh, do you yourself utilize that? Like for instance, let's say uh, to me outdoors, I think of a hike. I don't know, maybe I'm not sure. very sophisticated about what you can do outdoors. Clearly I stay in a lot. But that said, <laughs> you know, outdoor I think of a hike. If you were taking some of your clients, and I, and I believe you were telling me earlier that you actually have done this, but sure. if you were taking a group of clients, let's say, out onto a hike, you know, sure they're going to get some fresh air and they're all going to maybe have to team up and things like that and I get that and I'm certainly not diminishing the importance of that but can you tell me how it might work? For instance, you've got a group that's studying conflict resolution mm -hmm. and you have maybe four of them um, in a group. What would you do when you take them out of the building? If you know what I mean. Let's not necessarily the kayaking thing but like a hike. Sure. How could that be beneficial other than taking a break and of course doing some breathing but how would it be beneficial in the context of a classroom program? Okay, so take reachability for example. We have a four youth program there and one afternoon I took a group of youth, uh, five youth for a hike and that proved extremely beneficial because they had a component of planning, organizing, they knew expectations um, that you know we would have to manage our time while we were there and then there was an element of leadership. So it's also getting people out of their regular environments uh, whereas the classroom can sometimes be stifling or for people with certain disabilities like AD um, they might need another outlet and a physical activity so that they can then absorb some of the information that later is going to be given to them. So sometimes just stepping out of that environment can be beneficial. So we went for a hike and a lot of the youth were really challenged because some had physical disabilities, others had mental, emotional. So as we were on the hike, everybody was pushing their own limits and that was really neat to see. So what some people could do physically, other people were struggling with, but other people were overcoming their own personal barriers. And you're also able to, within the context of what you're doing, figure out how to different people at different stages and and how to best you know support each one of them and still make it relevant to all the people because one of the things I always find the hardest in programming mm -hmm. is how to engage all five and as you said as cross disability agency which is what reachability is it can be extremely challenging to engage so I have a couple more questions for you when we come back but let's take a quick break here on East League TV this is Inclusion Revolution I'm your host Tova Sherman we have Krista Harder with her and we'll be right back